How's everyone doing on this Thursday? Yes, it is Thursday the 8th of June, and I am just outside of Laredo, Texas. I pick up tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I delivered today in San Antonio, Texas. That was a long drive. Long drive. I came in all the way from Prescott, Arkansas this morning. I took off at 2.30 this morning delivered at noon in San Antonio, if that gives you an idea. So, I am here at the uh, Road Ranger truck stop, in, uh, just outside of Laredo, Texas, and I ran into a fellow truck driver out here, he's a local driver, and he has been on the carnivore diet, um, he's been struggling a little bit with it. So a shout out to him right now. It was great meeting you. And um, I was able to give him the No Brainer Carnivore book written by my buddy, Steve Sims, S.G. Sims. Now, Steve gave me 20 of these to pass out as I see fit when I come across truck drivers that would benefit from this book. This happened to be a driver that I thought would benefit from the book. Anyone can benefit from the book, but I'm passing them out to truck drivers I encounter out here in my travels that I believe would benefit from reading his book. So, shout out to Steve. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Now, eating carnivore on the road is not a difficult thing, as I keep showing you time and time again. I went in today and the food options here were not that great. Um, I don't want to eat fried food, which is pretty much all they had. They have a church's chicken here. Um, aside from being all fried food, uh, it's extremely expensive. Um, so I did find, and so did this other driver. We kind of had the, both the same mind about this and that's how we started talking about carnivore. And of course he saw my shirt the meat fuels your beast thought that was pretty cool which it is and if you would like your very own meat fuels your beast shirt or any of the other carnivore t-shirts i've designed the link will be down in the description enough of that so i was able to find and he was too this uh pre six family smokehouse and what it was was a tray of meat. You had a couple options. They had summer sausage, uh, pork, pork tenderloin, and uh, turkey. Those were your options available. And on either side of the meat were a row on each side of sliced Colby Jack cheese. So I had a dinner of summer sausage and cheese. It cost me, I think it was about eight bucks, eight, nine bucks, something like that, for the whole packet. Now get this, the macros are way crazy cool. The total is 203 calories for all of it. And uh, zero sugar, zero added sugars, 12 grams of protein for the summer sausage, six grams of protein for the cheese, uh, 250 milligrams of potassium in the summer sausage, and 100, uh, no, and 16 milligrams of potassium in the cheese. Now, the summer sausage had one milligram of iron as well, and the calcium, 10 milligrams for the summer sausage, 184 milligrams for the cheese. Uh, vitamin D was in both, uh, not much, but a little bit. Carbs. Now this is a killer. Everything in here, less than one gram of carbs. The whole pack, one. I thought these macros were pretty cool. Pretty cool. Cholesterol, 25 milligrams for the summer sausage, 25 milligrams from the cheese. Sodium, you're getting a whopping 510 milligrams 
for the summer sausage and 189 milligrams for the cheese. So anyway, enough about that. I'm just point, proving a point here that it's not difficult as an over the road truck driver to eat carnivore out here. Just like it's not difficult for anyone to eat carnivore. There are no excuses. Now what I will say about carbohydrates is you need to get carbohydrates out of your system, okay? You need to get fruits, vegetables out of your system, or at least extremely minimized if you're gonna go the keto route or the keto bore route. But they're gonna give you nothing but problems. Eating plants is gonna give you a problem with oxalates and other anti-nutrients that will prohibit the protein that you think you're taking in to your body, but you're not. You're only getting a, a small portion of that. And that is one of the defensive chemicals in plants, as Dr. Anthony Chafee so appropriately states, plants are trying to kill you. Thank you, Dr. Anthony Chafee. We do appreciate that sentiment. On to another topic. Redmond's Real Salt, I had heard about their salt crystals. So I ordered some, they came in. If you are having a food craving, especially for sweets, give this puppy a lick a few times. Problem solved, I guarantee you. Just a few things you can do out here to make your carnivore journey and lifestyle and health much more easily attainable. So forget the naysayers out there. You're going to do what you need to do for your body. It's your body, you get one life to live, live it good. Now we've, the majority of us have eaten a crap standard American or standard atrocious diet, as Dr. Um, Lisa Wiedemann likes to point out. Now, that would make sense because not everyone is from America, so it can't be a standard American diet. Now, if people around the world are eating the same way. But eating that way, or eating like I did, I came seven years vegan into carnivore. And I can tell you that eating plants will screw up your body, maybe not right away, but slowly over time, your body will develop health problems down the road. And you may not be aware of these. These could be things like your body taking nutrients. Your, your body is going to survive no matter what. So if you are not getting the proper nutrients into your body from the food you're eating, mainly if you're eating plants, you have too many anti-nutrients in your body. You're not getting the nutrition your body needs. The bioavailability is not there. Contrary to what vegan celebrity doctors will tell you. So you need to understand that more than anything. But switching to carnivore is not a difficult thing to do. And each person will develop health problems according to how they have lived their life in their eating. And it also depends on a few factors. I've spoken about this before at minimal length, and that comes to your ancestry. What your parents ate and what their parents ate before them will greatly impact what your body can tolerate for one. And so let's say they did eat a lot of plants, okay? That means your body is probably more than likely more capable and able to tolerate plants for a longer time than someone who didn't. Their parents didn't. Their parents' parents didn't. So you see people leaving veganism in droves either within the first few months. Some people it could be a year or two. For me it was seven was the magic number for me before my body started slapping me around saying, hey, stupid, wake up. Some people take 25 years being vegan before 
they get so scared because of what they've done to their body that now it is a struggle for them to try and fix their body with proper human diet, which is eating meat and eggs, period. I'm telling you that right now. That is a proper species specific diet for humans is meat and eggs. We need to eat animal products. Now, when I went into veganism, I did it for health reasons. And yes, when you go into any diet, you change your diet, you're gonna cut out the highly processed foods, you're going to cut out the sugars, you're gonna cut out the fried foods, especially fast food, and you're going to lose weight. That's just how it works with any diet, no matter what diet that is. And most people will stick to it for a while until they see that it's not working for them. Or their brain is saying, hey, I want sugar. I want sugar now. I want carbs now. And you give in because either you're like, oh, I'm really craving that. I haven't had that so long. I've been so good. So I'll go back to eating the same crap that I was doing before. And that's where the trap lies. People say they fall off the bandwagon or they fall off the wagon. Get back on. So what? You fall off, you take a few steps, stumble back to the back steps of that wagon, and you just climb yourself right back up. And you get on that wagon again. Because your health is more important than anything. Now, like I said, when I went vegan, I did it for health reasons. I learned about the ethics in veganism later on, as most people do. Now, I can understand you don't want to harm animals. I didn't either. And for the majority, we don't harm animal, animals. I can talk. I'm tired today. I drove a lot, and I got up super early. I left at 2.30 this morning. I went to bed last night about 12.30 in the morning. So about two hours of sleep, and then ran a full day. So I will be catching up on that sleep tonight, I guarantee it. But that is one thing also as a carnivore, I have noticed I do not require as much sleep and I am able to be alert, awake, and motivated with no problem and no caffeine. That's right, I don't drink coffee, I don't drink soft drinks, I don't drink energy drinks. I used to drink energy drinks four, no, two per day, minimum. So I understand about that. I understand about the cravings too. But if you want to fix your body, you can do it. Animals, we don't harm animals as far as being abusive to them. Now, what you have seen in some vegan documentaries, those are extreme instances. And it's even been rumored that some of those people were paid to abuse animals for the camera. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I'm just saying it's a rumor out there. Is it possible? Sure, it's possible. You have to understand that your health is the most important. The absolute most important. And I'm talking to you, someone who is vegan, especially, and is having health problems. They're not reversing the medical conditions the severe medical conditions they have by eating plant-based or vegan. They're being told about all these miracles that'll happen if you start eating plants and stop eating animals, because animals are the things that are putting you in these medical conditions in the hospital and killing people, which is tr not true at all. Zero, 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 zero truth to that. If you're eating a species-specific diet, eating animals, because that's what humans eat. We've been doing it for millions of years. The vegan push really didn't start until around the 60s and 70s. And that was shortly after falsified studies were done by people like Ansel Keys and other researchers when they were paid off by the sugar industry to falsely show and say 
that cholesterol and fat were the leading cause of heart disease, when in fact the whole time it has been sugar. And now sugar is in just about every product and processed food out there. Coincidence? Money? Power? Who knows? But doctors and dietitians and nutritionists are taught using these falsified data elements in their training. So I can't fault these people for giving this information out over the decades that has been 100% absolutely wrong. And I commend people like Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Sean Baker, and others who realize this and are putting the information out there to the masses. They all have YouTube channels with free information they are giving you because this is their way of making up for giving bad advice, medical advice, bad medical advice over the years because of false teaching. We need to unlearn what we were told has been bad for us and relearn what our species specific diet is and that is eating animals, period. It really is. Now, we don't eat our dogs, we don't eat our cats, we generally don't eat pets. Those are domesticated animals and we don't eat them. Those never really were in our food chain. It wasn't on our menu for millions of years. Are there some that do in the world? Yes. Thankfully, that is going out the door because personally, I don't think it's a good idea. Personally, I don't think it's that healthy. But ruminant animals, now they eat plants. They were designed to eat plants and they know what plants they can eat. And they were given a um, four chamber stomach. They have basically have four stomachs to filter all of the crap in the plants out so that it can be neutrally distributed into their body in a healthy manner. So when we as humans eat that meat, it has been filtered by these ruminant animals. And that is why so many people do so much better eating ruminant meat. Now ruminant meaning like cows, lamb, things like that. Um, animals that have a four stomach system, four chamber stomach system that can filter these things out. Now, can you eat other animals? Yes, you can. You can eat pork. We've been eating pork for millions of years. Um, some people can tolerate it, some people can't. Thankfully, the majority of people can. Is it okay to have bacon if you can tolerate it? Absolutely. Is it delicious? Yes. Oh, and vegans will be the first to say, you want to eat animals because it's tasty. No, I want to eat animals because it's the proper human diet for human beings. And I eat within my species specific realm of eating. Do I want that food to taste amazing? Absolutely, who doesn't? Even vegans, they try to make their food taste somewhat edible, especially with seasonings. Tofu, don't even get me, we'll have a separate video on tofu. But yes, it does take on the taste of pretty much whatever you're cooking it with. But is it healthy for you? The answer to that is an emphatic no. And people are just shocked when they hear that. I'm sorry if this is a slap in the face to some people, but when your health is in jeopardy, you know, my best friend was metabolically so unhealthy and he'd been eating crappy the majority of his life that when he bent down to pet a dog, he had a massive 
heart attack and he died at 40 years old. That's a wake-up call. If you're having chest pains, don't ignore it. That's a wake-up call. There's something going on. You don't want to die. What clogs your arteries? Is it cholesterol? No. Is cholesterol in there? Yes. But cholesterol is there to do a job to clean up the crap that you've been putting in your arteries from the sugar and the carbohydrates. And don't forget that all carbohydrates turn into sugar. So don't blame the cholesterol for what the sugar does. And salt. Let's talk about salt for a brief moment. We've been told we need to limit our salt intake. No. Our bodies require salt. Our bodies thrive on salt. We need salt. What happens when you're dehydrated? You go to the hospital. What's the first thing they do? They're going to pump you full of saline. Salt. Into your body. Because they know, as medical professionals, that that is what you need. You need salt. When you're on the carnivore diet, you are going to eat a lot of salt. Now, if you're not eating all the processed crap that's out there, because have you ever looked at the boxes or the packages of some of the crap you're eating and look at the sodium content? You're going to get far less sodium just taking a shaker of real salt and seasoning your food with it to taste than you are all this crap salt that's in all of this processed food mostly with sugar so if you really want better health you need to start taking care of your body and that means you need to start eating meat I've got friends in the vegan community that have come to me in the past and even recently and they are suffering from medical conditions now I try to be a friend and let them see how I live by example and how I cured my medical conditions by going carnivore. Once you get the proper things your body needs, your body will heal. As the saying goes, meat heals. 100% true. Plants kill, meat heals. End of story. So this video has gone on a little longer than I had anticipated. I just wanted to get this information out. And again, Steve, thank you for gifting me 20 of these to hand out to drivers that I believe would benefit from your book, which is extremely easy to read. You can read this in one day or two days for some people, and you can start the very next day. That's how easy this is to understand. He doesn't go into major medical speak or anything because Let's face it, he's not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. We give information based on our own lives and the experiences that we've had. So I want you to really think, is what you're doing, and I'm talking to vegans especially on this, being an ex-vegan of seven years, do you really think it's healthy to eat according to a philosophy versus eating what your species-specific proper human diet over millions of years has been? Do you think it's a coincidence that there's an epidemic level of obesity, heart disease, and cancer and every other form of disease you can think of that has skyrocketed? since the 60s, since these false data points were put into practice in the medical and pharmaceutical industry. And we're going to have another video about the pharmaceutical industry because i got a few things to tell you there. They will use the heart strings to tug on your heart showing these animals in distress 
and being abused. And I already talked about the abuse. Now, the being in distress, that's understandable. They're going to be slaughtered to become our food. That is what they are designed for. Certain animals have been our food for millions of years. We have hunted animals for our food for millions of years. This is just a fact of life. Nature can be cruel, and that is just how it is. But I thank them for their sacrifice to nourish and sustain our bodies. Because honestly, they wouldn't be here otherwise. They are here to feed us. And I know vegans don't like hearing that. They're like, oh, I don't have murder on my plate. You have blood on your hands, blah, blah, blah. You pay other people to slaughter innocent animals for your pleasure. No, for my nutrition. And if you want to talk about slaughtering animals, more animals are killed in the cultivation of crops that vegans eat for their primary food. That is a proven fact. For the one cow, maybe a few chickens a year that I eat, I consume as a carnivore, is nothing compared to the animals that are killed for the cultivation of crops. And before you pop up vegan, because I know you're thinking this, oh, well, 85% uh, of the crops or 75% of the crops are used to feed livestock. So that's where the majority of the killing goes. No, it's about 33%, so about one third. You are responsible for two thirds of the suffering and killing of innocent animals for your food. Unless you grow your own food and you don't kill anything in the process. So I don't like it when vegans use the speciesist argument. Oh, well, you allow certain animals to live and you allow certain animals to die. I could throw it right back at you and say you do the same thing. Argue me on that. Argue me. Thanks for listening, everyone. Sorry it's been long-winded. This has been a long time coming. There's more coming. You can heal. Eat meat. And meat fuels your beast. Remember that. We are animals. Humans are animals. Animals eat animals. Carnivore animals eat animals. Humans are carnivores. Yes, we can be omnivores. We are definitely not herbivores. A very small percentage of people can be herbivores. And only for a period of time to be determined by their own personal life choices when it comes to their food. And like I said, their ancestral background when it comes to food. Anyway, I'm signing off here. I've got a little more work to do before I get to bed. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it. It helps with the algorithms here on YouTube, as we all know. And I will continue my message. Take care, everyone. Love y'all.